Welcome back to another edition of uh, Broken. Uh, our guest today is no one else but uh, Dr. U.D. Mass. <laughs> U.D. Mass, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, Doc, you're welcome back. <laughs> you, I like that one, U.D. Mass. <laughs> Thank you. So tell us a Thank story you. about what happened in secondary school. I think uh, you guys are ready to hear this part. Yes. In my secondary school, I... I started trying my best to, to be a good boy, focused on my, my academics. So, doing pretty well. I was among the first five, 10, always in the class. So, but around um, my JSS uh, junior, uh, JS3, then uh, I finished our junior work, we were the first set that did that. Then SS1, I started noticing setback. So I will go in for exam and then lose my memory. I will not be able to remember anything until the, I will hear, get ready to submit your paper. So, Immediately I hear that, my memory will come back. So I was passing that through that trauma, and then the result will come out, I will see myself failing. I was shocked, and the whole class were shocked too, because they knew me. My classmates knew me, so they were surprised what was happening. But then I never confided to my parents, nor anyone, but only to my best friend. So I never knew what was happening to me. First term, second term, the same thing repeated. I will enter into exam. I will not remember nothing. And then when it's time to pass, submit your script, my senses will come back. So at the third term, I now prayed. But before then, what happened was with all the pornographic life style. Then depression started setting in because my academics was no more good. And I was afraid being a son of a teacher, my dad would not want to hear that. So I had to struggle within myself. I don't know who to run to. I was losing my life. I was started feeling, having feeling for ladies, wanting to have my own girlfriend, wanting to pass my exam, struggling with pornography, losing my peace, being depressed, failing my exam, but still obedient to my parents, but I wasn't happy any longer. So it kept happening. One day somebody met me and started telling me about getting born again. So it sounded good to me and I listened to the person and the person prayed for me and uh, told me they would be having an outreach crusade. So I invited me, I was there and uh, came out for what I call, gave my life to Jesus. From that time, my life changed. My life changed. I had peace. All those load of depression disappeared. I burnt the pornographic pictures and started talking to my friends about Jesus. So, started telling my parents about Jesus. They were surprised because naturally I am, I was very obedient to my parents, going to a farm, uh, fetching water, washing plates, sweeping the house. Every mother in the village would love me to be their child. Every mother who met me on the market, on the road to the farm, we begin to complain and say, look at this boy, fetching water, carrying firewood. My own is there, running inside the bush, running after uh, uh, killing birds and setting trap for animal. I would do my ear as if I didn't hear. And I will come back, come back again. So that was, that was, were, were the things I was doing and 
my parents loved me for that. But they never knew that there was another side of me right. that, that was dying. And I was even ready to give up. I was even saying to myself, what, the, what was the essence of life? Because I had no peace <laughs> any longer. So you were feeling so, suicidal? Yeah, you know, you know, someone, life, life is in, di in different stages, life is in different phases. Someone can come to work and look fine, dress fine, look handsome, look pretty good, but something might be happening the next hour you hear that a person has committed suicide. That's correct. So that was the kind of stage of life I was passing through. Nobody in my family knew that I was passing through a very bad situation because I love to read. So coming back to have my result, failing and then not doing well was a big deal to me. And uh, I couldn't speak to no one but to that my friend. And each time I speak to him, he will laugh. And after laughing, I will start laughing with him and that will be the end. You were about to tell us what happened to you as a young man and what was behind or what was going on behind the scenes that you were not aware of that was impacting your academics at the time. So, like I said, I, I, I didn't know what was wrong with me. So I was just struggling, but I knew that something was wrong, but I never knew what it was. But my friend used to tell me stories about how the uncles used to go for a native doctor, this and that, use charm for that. So I usually tell him I don't believe in it. But it's possible that what you don't believe can be affecting you. That you don't believe in God doesn't mean God does not exist. Many people say they don't believe in God. That does not mean that God is not does not have influence in you. You may not believe in charm, you may not believe in occult. It doesn't mean that occultism and charm doesn't exist. So that was what I was saying. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in charm. I don't believe in native doctor. Uh, because it, actually, he was, that was an evangelism he was doing for me to join him. But I didn't know. So but then, what I never believed in, maybe, at the end of this story, you will know was what was affecting me. So... After giving my life to Jesus, that was my third term in SS1. Well, that's, as a, a secondary school, what do you call it? Uh, class four, class four, yeah. So I was in my third term. I didn't know what to do because at that third term, if I fell again, there it is a continuous assessment. I failed first term, I failed second term. If I fail to them, that means I will repeat a class, and then it will be obvious. My parents will not know that something was wrong. And I never wanted them to know that there was something. I never needed any of my siblings to know something was wrong with me, because my father will not take it easy with me. So I started praying, having, get, having gotten born again. Started praying that I will pass my third term. So I said, God, give me a miracle. Let me pass my third term. Even if it is just seeing promoted. So when my result came out, I saw promoted. I was happy. I started making arrangements to leave the school to another secondary school close by in a nearby village. So I told my friend, I never told anybody about him, so I told him um, I want to go to another school. First of all, I wanted to go to Federal Government College of Kigwe, but then the, the principal was from my village then, so I, before I know it, he came back and told me that there's no space again. So I said, ah, 
Does it mean that I'm, this is my friend want to move to? He never told me he wanted to move. So when I wanted to do the next move, I told myself, I will not tell him again the school I want to go. So I, I didn't want to tell my dad I wanted to change school. I took the decision on myself. And by myself, I moved to the next school. And then I was begging God, let them not ask me for written report, parents, support report, and all those things. But God may have it. I went there. They were able to say, I should just bring my last resort. So I said, that one is not a problem. So I brought my last resort and gave to them. So I was given admission into the next class. Uh, into primary uh, SS2. SS2. So when I entered SS2, I was there. I started writing tracks to my former school. Each of the of my classmates, I write your name by pack of envelope, write your name on the envelope, put a track that suits your lifestyle, and then right on top of it, on top of the envelope, all your sins. You are a, <laughs> you are a, a thief. Stop stealing. <laughs> If you continue stealing, you will die. You perish, you go to hellfire. Right. Then those who were, my friend who was into diabolic activities, I, uh, I told him, wrote his own, you are into charms, stop it, or you will die. Those who were chasing women, I write to them the same. I write your name. Then our school goalkeeper, I wrote to him, I said, you used to go to a native doctor before you go for our football team. Stop it or you die. So when the envelope landed in, in my class, my former school, there was an uproar. Every, the whole class was scattered. Everybody, they say, you demand, see you, what you demand wrote. So they, I said, they should give it to our class rep and they shared it. The whole class scattered everybody. Some people were feeling sad some people were feeling remorse some people started confessing their sins some people gave their life to jesus how did i know one of the days as i was going on an errand i met a friend who was, who was also a class, former classmate who now told me thank god you left the school i said what what do you mean he said do you know what was happening to you i said i never knew what was it he said Never knew that your best friend was using a brain to write an exam. I said, what? It was like a scare fell out from my eyes. And then it was like, I came back to my senses. What do you mean? It was like becoming clearer to me. What do you mean? So my best friend, he said, yeah, everybody knew. I said, everybody knew and nobody told me. So everybody in the class knew. Everybody in the class knew what was happening to you, even uh, some of our teachers knew. I felt so bad because it was like living life in the midst of life I was not alive. You feel you are living, but you are not alive. You just like somebody entering inside a bus and the bus is moving, you thought the bus is packed. And it's only people outside who know that your bus is moving. So that's the kind of life some of us are living. You live a life, but you never know what is driving you. You don't know that people see you in another perspective. You are seeing yourself right. that you're living, but people know that you are not living. It's just like a madman. A madman doesn't know that he is mad. When you see somebody whose brain is correct, you call him a madman. The same way it is in the kingdom affairs. When you are being oppressed by the devil you may not know what is happening to you but there is and there are people who may know better than you who have an understanding that you are passing through this kind of shit so that particular encounter with that my classmate opened my eyes and it was clear to me that 
it was true because everything that happened to me ended up with my friend. Nobody knew what was happening to me. I only went back to him for solutions. He would only laugh and laugh and I would laugh with him and that would be the end. So then how did I now know, confirmed it, one of the days I was in my house, our school goalkeeper came, who was also my classmate, and started telling me the story of his life after I had left. He would tell me the first chapter, I would tell him the second chapter, he would tell me the second chapter, I would tell him the third chapter, he would tell me the fourth chapter, I would tell him the fifth chapter, which means we were passing through, or we both passed through the same situation from the same source. So I said, what? This was what was happening to me. Is it what is happening to you now? He said, yes. I said, which means when I left, there was an exchange looking for somebody else to, to take over from me. And his own was so was that he will be going back from school. He will forget his bags. He will forget everything. Almost getting to the house, he will remember his assignment. You remember his school assignment, homework, and then he will start going back to school again. So he told me he was almost running mad. So he had to go and consult a native doctor who now told him what he should bring. So while he brought all those things, he was going to give it to the native doctor then he met a class, one of our school girls who met him and told him not to continue in that journey. So he was surprised how the girl knew why, where, what he was doing or where he was going to. So he insisted and he went and met the native doctor. The doctor gave him a perfume that he should rub and then use it rub it on his hand and then sh shake the young man and then maybe the charm of the young man will be destroyed. So that fearful day, say he was going to school very early, but the young man used to come to a class earlier than almost everybody. So he was uh, going to school, started hearing noise at the bush. Suddenly, he was surprised, how can somebody be in the bush so early? Suddenly he saw somebody coming out, it was a young man, and his body was shaking because he couldn't believe that the young man would be coming out from the bush. It was the person he wanted to shake. So when he stretched his hand to shake him, his own hand was even shaking. He couldn't shake him, and the young man looked at him up and down from his head to the toe and sized him like a, you know, a beginner in a occultic <laughs> world. In, in the occultic <laughs> world. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, he walked away. Mm -hmm. So that was how bad it was. And then after he saw that that was not working, and then we were about taking our WAYEC, SSCE. So he remembered those tracks I sent to him and then started looking for me. That was how he came to my house mm -hmm. and started narrating the same incident that happened to me exactly was what he was passing through. So I told him that same Jesus who did that for me, oh. I will pray for you. He will do it for you. So I let my hands, told him to kneel down. We kneel down together. We held our hands. We cried and prayed and called upon the name of the Lord. And that was the end of that affliction. So he got, del he got delivered. Yes. Now you got delivered, your friend has got yes. delivered. Uh, yes. God is doing a great and mighty thing in your life at that young and tender age. You have a, a desire, a passion for him. But now you find yourself, let's move from here to Umudike, where you now went to university. So now you're in university, correct? Tell us, yes. the story, tell us your story about your university day. Yeah, so when I... When I joined the secondary school where I moved out from to the next secondary school where I joined, there was a great revival going on there in that school. So I joined that school and I saw great revival. That revival took me 
through and sustained me. And I now carried that revival to uh, my university days. And that revival started in Scripture Union Group Fellowship in a school called Cronetta. So when I entered the university as a Scripture Union member, this year, so we were taught to read the Bible and study. So I also joined the Christian Fellowship and then continued to serve the Lord in the school. Uh, so zealous, so zealous. And then before you know it, I, my passion was so much. And then I, 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 I was having issues with my academics uh, because we were not properly uh, mentored because sometimes there was too much there was, there was too much zeal with your yeah, what without you knowledge in was the non, without knowledge of what you yeah. there was no basically there was no balance yes there was no you were just completely imbalanced you were just yeah you felt, you felt like you were all out there and this is what you had to do and you forgot that you had some responsibility with your academics and somewhere yeah. along the line that began to impact you correct yeah it started yeah i even started in secondary school because i wanted to leave uh, that my first secondary when i got born again in that school where i was having affliction i wanted to stop going to school I wanted to just pack out and then be an evangelist be talking to my classmates uh, there were some of them when i see them i start crying and say all these people going to hellfire that kind of thing so when i entered university um, I was my my CGPA first semester was beautiful because you cannot become a leader in Christian Union if you are not uh, if your GP is not up to 2.5. So my GP was good, but then other um, semesters I didn't do well again. And then uh, other, a lot of other things, sidetraction. Side so it affected my result generally, and then my general graduation result too. So uh, I was think, looking at myself, possibility of graduation was not there. I would like graduate, there were a lot of carryovers. So I started praying to God to show me mercy. God to show me mercy. So, and God did, God showed me mercy. Yeah, I believe in mercy, there is something called mercy. But even one of my lecturers met me and was telling me a result it's not good. What do you want me to do? I said, show me mercy. The lecturer was looking at me. Instead of giving him money or whatever, I said, show me mercy. So that mercy was God was what God showed to me. And I was able to graduate without giving any money to anybody given any bribe yeah even in my secondary school when they said uh, everybody need to pay for bribe to sit for the entrance i said no i will not do that, that how, long was, is, how long was your school your school your, how, how long was your degree four years was it a four years degree yeah it was a four-year program and how long were you in university for? Started, yeah, my first degree was statistics. I, I did one, one four years and then one extra semester. Okay. Just an they, extra and semester. Then, and then you finished? Yes. Um, was your results something you were happy about at that time? No, 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 no. Generally, the, uh, uh, we, we did statistics and uh, were a cluster of people... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, statistics, even when we came, they say it's a, a, a department for mad people. Our lecturer was telling us, say, department of mad people. Before you know it, half of the class ran away. And then a few of us who are remaining, who sustained the final year, and uh, pretty 60% uh, didn't do well. So you know, a lot of people didn't do well. So we uh, came out with not very good results. So. But that was not. But that was not the end. There was yes. a ton. There was a turning point. We need yes. to hit a turning point because we've got very limited time. Something happened that you had that result that you were not happy about, 
you yeah. found yourself working in something called the mission house which was almost like a shack a yes. shack where huts built with um out of rebels and remains of uh, of pans and stuff like that just to house just to house a bunch of uh, uh um uh, misfits in society at the time and you were now given the responsibility to mentor these misfits and while you were doing yes. that something happened what happened tell your story yes so while i left with a uh, very low degree uh i had to go to uh, lagos um Patako to uh, do my youth service then from Patako, i went to lagos started doing a uh, computer business i was there i, I had to, i had a, uh, a voice telling me we need to get back to uh, uh, former school so i said okay let me get down there maybe something good is coming up so i just went there known to me my mentor who was uh, the engineer who was in charge of building the university chapel said to me i need to sit at that chapel building and supervise the work so wow the supervising work inside this bush ah from lagos to bush can i in the university that is a, the worst part of the university where I have snacks, scorpions everywhere in the bush. No, but they want to come there to visit you. So I said, okay. I stayed there, started supervising the work. I said, okay, I'm in this school. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can remedy some of my degrees, uh, which the first degree I did. So uh, I need to remedy it. So that was how I started my PG program. I started in my postgraduate diploma program. And uh, before you know it, I was carrying block, cement, and then supervising the building, and then running to class, do my postgraduate program. Before you know it, I started doing my master's, carrying block, carrying cement, supervising, set up the building, and then I run into class. So then one of the days, the project engineer came in and said to me, who was my mentor, who is my mentor say today, said to me, we need to build uh, something called Mission House, that the, the chaplain said we should build a Mission House. I said, ah, what's Mission House? He said, it's a place where, a place set aside for indigent students, students who were formerly involved in courtism, who gave their life to Jesus, orphans, less privileged, uh, a place where we're going to use to rehabilitate them. So eventually I built that place as it gave me direction. And then after building it, I was also privileged to be among the first occupants of that place. So hmm. that was how we started the mission house project which was a vision by the uh, then pioneer chaplain so you stayed there you built you built this mission house for rebels but you were able to ask you were literally carrying out the manual level yourself you were also yes. inspired to get out from the dungeon of where you came from and you got your post credit diploma then you went to do your master's degree and what else yes after my master's degree i proceeded for my phd wow so uh, because i i told myself that uh, i need to be an, a good example for those young boys and young girls who who thought that when you you didn't do well in a your first degree your life had ended so yeah. uh, and that was the end of everything. So I needed to make a point. Having been uh, a senior person among them, so I needed to also to make a point to my primary, uh, primary uh, my secondary school mates that uh, that was not the end of me. 
and my friend who was using my brain he eventually got born again and became a pastor he became a pastor in Winners Chapel before he he went to be with the Lord. So oh, that life, yeah, that life, my life, by God's grace, I, I, I affected him. And uh, people around me, my parents too, joined me. And uh, also, before they went to be with the Lord, they all got born again. So wonderful. And all, all those my friends, all those my secondary school friends, most of them are, are pastors and they're doing well. So, um, uh, so having started living that, uh, setting that example for others to follow. So I had to make sure I do it to the end. Yeah, stay there preparing to get married before I moved out from there. So I, I, I mentioned I mentored those who were coming out from court, those who were coming out from court, who renounced courtism because the university opened up uh, a hand of fellowship for those who were ready to come out from courtism. And uh, when they renounced, they were taken to the pastors. And after the pastors talked to them, they will be sent to us for rehabilitation in the mission house. And a provision was made for a meal, at least for a meal for each of the indigent students, or uh, orphans, or those who had nobody to help them, having been abandoned because the, the Scott people will be after them. And some of them have overstayed their, their tenure in the it's university. On campus, yes. On yes. campus. Some of them instead of four years, stayed five, six years, and some of them, their parents had already abandoned them. And most of them today are graduates and married and uh, all over the whole world. They are doing very, very well. Just for the, just for the sake of our um, international audience, when we talk about cultism, uh, it's almost like uh, being a member of a gang here in America or being a member of a fraternity where there's a lot of violence uh, among young teenagers and or young people who are trying to take over territory, uh, whatever the territory is. And uh, Dr. Udo, as you just shared, been instrumental mentoring it. How long did you do this for, Doc? Yes, uh, more than 15 years. You spent 15 years of your life pouring into yeah. young people who were just coming from the streets or coming from the back of the back end of society, and you were investing in their personal life. What yes, a powerful yes. story. And today, yeah. now you are now, you're a doctor, you're a lecturer, obviously you're still a mentor. And what, what was your PhD in? Yeah, my PhD is in uh, entrepreneurship and agriculture. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So there you go now. So now you've positioned yourself in society. Um, I believe married with uh, kids. Uh, three kids. Uh, wonderful. So yes, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you, sir. Uh, this has been a very inspiring story. It is the Three story beautiful of, kids and a beautiful uh, wife. Three, and a beautiful three beautiful wife. kids <laughs> and a beautiful wife. Beautiful wife. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That's good. That's fantastic. Um, Dr. Udo, it's it's a pleasure talking to you. It's been a real big pleasure talking to you. Um, Thank you. What you've just shared with us again is that um, that the, the perseverance is the ultimate thing that brings success. That no matter the, the no matter the, the challenges we face in life, no matter how broken we are, whether it's a broken dream, uh, a, a broken relationship, a broken marriage, a broken life, that as long as you put your hands and your trust into the hands of Jesus Christ and stay focused on the light and the truth, you will always come back and you will always emerge on top. Uh, yes, I personally believe that God is the God of the bad boys. And that's why he takes yes, people sir. like you and I and turns our life around uh, to bring glory only to him and him alone. Thank you, Doc, for making out this day. Uh, Thank you, is sir. there anything you'd like to say to our audience before we finish? Uh, is For me, it's an awesome pleasure. Yes. Yes, uh, this will be the, uh, the first one of this uh, story. I'm, I'm, I will be coming back again. Uh, once uh, the next stage comes out, because there is, there is something cooking. God is cooking something 
that, that is going to make us smile, everybody. So I, I am saying that um, for our young ones that are being influenced by the environment everywhere, there are everywhere, uh, peer group uh, activities are affecting lives, and many times parents don't know who their children are. This story, I feel a little bad about it because uh, my parent doesn't know about this story. But I was a good boy all through their lifetime, but I never knew the other painful part of my life that I was passing through alone. So parents, so many times you, you don't really know full story of your children. You may think you know all about them. So, but, but, but I don't know. But there's somebody who can help us assess more about who our children are. And that is to go closer to God. Maybe he will show you. If you go closer to him, he will come closer to you. He will show more of your children and ex expose their life to you. And from there, you will know how to handle some of their challenges and struggles. Yes, yes. that's right. Is, is, well, that's, what the, that's what the light does. The closer you come to the light, the brighter yeah. everything becomes for you yeah. to overcome it. It's not for you to bring shame. It's not for you to put them down, but it's for you to lift them up and continue on the right path. Thank you yeah. very much, uh, you, Dr. Um, Udo. Uh, okay, did thank I pronounce the last name correct? Thank you, sir. Yes. Okay, thank you. It's a pleasure you. having you on this show, and we will see you again soon. And whatever is thank cooking, you. whatever is cooking, me, I want a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> thank All you. right, let's take a break, and we're going to wrap up when we come back. Yeah. Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, making out time to be with us today. Uh, we just finished a lovely issue of um, Broken Not Shattered. This is a, a regular program that you can find on any of our platforms, um, Broken Not Shattered on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, and we are continuing to build stories and we'll tell stories of redemption, stories to uplift people, stories of people that went through broken relationships um, broken marriages, uh, broken homes, broken dreams, um, broken visions, uh, corporations that were built and broke apart, um, broken family relationships. But at the end of the day, there's restoration because it's going to inspire you. So please join us on any of our platforms, follow us as you can, and make sure we see you again in our next issue of Broken Not Shattered. On behalf of the team, this is your host, I could wear from Washington, D.C. saying thank you and have a great day. God bless you.